welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate. I'm Yetta Decker, and today I'm here with one of my two favorite sidekicks. Who is that? That's me, Ryan. Ryan who? Ryan Decker. Right. If you haven't heard Ryan in a little bit, for a little bit, you'll be thrilled he's back because his shows are always interesting. They're always unique. They're always a little bit um, different. Is that not the right way to say it, Ryan? Sure. And that's because that's who he is as a human. So I think it's really neat. Today you're joining us on a New Year's show. So Happy New Year's. We are thrilled to be here with you. It's exciting to think that we can learn together, grow together, celebrate life together, Mm -hmm. and even spend special occasions and holidays together. Mm -hmm. So we're thrilled that you are here with us and that we are here with you. Yeah, New Year's is actually one of my favorite days of the year. And... We've talked a lot about why that is, Ryan, Mm -hmm. and I know we want to talk about today why New Year's in particular is one of your favorite days, and that's going to be the topic of our show, Yeah. right? So why is it, Ryan? So often if you look back at your life, there there may be a certain time of year or a certain day of the year that something great seems to happen every year. I don't know if it's a birthday or, you know, December 15th, it doesn't really matter. But or for Christmas Day. Or Christmas Day. There's just one day every year that, that's special to you. And to me, that's New Year's. And the reason is because usually a new habit is created. And it's normally a pretty big habit that I'm committed to for the year. And it has a significant impact on me and my family um, just because of one day. That's and it, really neat. It is. And I have created habits on other days of the year that are just as phenomenal It just seems to be a little bit easier on January 1st with all the hype to create a new habit. Right, because there's so many New Year's resolutions. So Mm -hmm. this show's not so much about New Year's resolutions as it is about habits. Mm -hmm. The choices that we make, and some of them are unconscious, some are conscious, and the ones we want to more focus on today is those conscious habits that we choose to instill in our life. Mm -hmm. Right? And we yeah. both, no, I wouldn't say we're experts at it, and yet we have spent, I've spent probably the last 25 years focusing on mm-hmm. instilling the right habits, and Ryan, having been raised in that home, and he's older than 25, so he's been around since we began that journey, Ken and I did, he has really taken that as a lifestyle choice yeah. as well. And then in the last year or two, I've really started to build my own cornerstone habits and with the foundation of the habits that were already there. So let's talk a little bit. We'll jump into it. I thought I got to share one of my favorite okay. poems. Okay, go, go with the poem. You were going to take oh, that away I, from me, Ryan. I was going to jump in. Go for it. All I'd right. love to hear this. So just maybe even if you can, close your eyes as you listen. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. No, please don't. <laughs> keep if you're them driving, open. keep them open. If, then go back and listen to the archive show when you have the opportunity to close your eyes if you are driving right now. How's that? That's good. Okay, That's good. perfect. So here goes. I am your constant companion. I am your greatest helper or your heaviest burden. I will push you forward to accomplishment and success, or I will drag you down to failure and defeat. Hmm. I'm completely at your command. Half the things you do, you might as well turn over to me because I'm going to do them easily and quickly and correctly. I am easily managed. You must merely be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done. And after a few lessons, I'm going to do it automatically. I am the secret, or the servant rather, I am a secret as well. I am the servant of all great people and alas, of all failures as well. Those who are great, I have made great. Those who are failures, I have made failures. I'm not a machine, though I work with the precision of a machine. Plus the intelligence of a human. You may, be, you may run me for profit or you may run me for ruin. It makes absolutely no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will place the world at your feet. 
be easy with me and I will destroy you. I'm a habit. That is a probably the best explanation of habit I have ever read or seen anywhere. And it's a little bit long, and that's why I said close your eyes and just listen with me. Mm -hmm. Take that in. It's worth listening to. I've actually taken the time over the years to actually memorize it so that it is part of me. And from time to time, I have to refresh because if I don't repeat it frequently, I can lose a few words or I might miss a line. And yet it has become internalized into my being. So even the mm. habit poem has become a habit. Mm -hmm. now, so now where did you want to go with that? Because what a great launching oh, pad man. that is, Ryan. So there's a lot of material in that. You know, for ruin, for like, there's just run me so, for profit, run yeah. me for ruin. I'm the servant of all great leaders and of all failures. Mm -hmm. And it's a habit. Yeah. And so let's dig in now. What's the difference between a conscious habit and a subconscious habit? And because you know, some people are like, well, you don't choose all your habits, right? right? Some of them, you know, you got from your family. Some of them, you just picked up on mistake. Some of them are. Well, good. some of them are great. Some like, of them I are like great. brushing my teeth. That's a good and, habit. And Ken often says, that's his little thing he likes to say. What is it, Ryan? <sighs> he only, only brush. brushes the teeth that he wants to keep. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's the habit of brushing your teeth. You just got to brush the ones you want to have. Yeah. Which is a really great habit. And right. at some point when you were a kid, your parents would have helped you instill that. And it would have been a conscious effort. Yeah. And now it's subconscious for you. Right. Because back before the turn of the century, brushing teeth was not a habit that people had instilled. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the toothpaste companies, and there's some great books that you can read, and we'll give you some a book list at the end of the show that'll just come from the top of our head, some of our favorite mm. habit-oriented books. And they didn't brush teeth. And it took the toothpaste companies decades to, and really they found a marketing, they found something that would be, um, that you wanted to have that you couldn't live without that they put in the toothpaste, which was that tingly great feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's how, so it was a craving that actually helped create that habit. Mm -hmm. It was a craving for that clean feeling in your mouth because that feeling doesn't actually do anything to keep your teeth healthy. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. And they did the same with shampoo. Yeah. They, uh, your shampoo doesn't actually have to lather no. in order to clean your hair. But the lathering feels addictive. It feels so good and you feel so clean after. And so we use more shampoo and we wash more often just because our shampoo lathers. It's pretty cool. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. So there's habits that have been imposed upon us mm -hmm. by marketers. Yeah. And some of them are good because I think it's good to bad. brush our teeth mm -hmm. and wash our hair because otherwise you stink. Yeah. And that's not so nice. That's not so good. No. And then, so you're talking about conscious and unconscious habits. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you take that away for a minute or two. Yeah. So again, conscious habits sometimes, or sorry, subconscious habits, sometimes you don't put them there. And sometimes you consciously put them there and then they become subconscious. And that's where you want most habits to go. And so if you can create uh, a cornerstone habit consciously, and then that becomes a subconscious habit. That's that's kind of the goal. And so cornerstone. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, Ryan? So to me, a cornerstone habit is any habit that will make massive impact on your life. So this isn't just a habit that you know you do once or twice and it feels good. This is a habit that is well, a consistent. habit you don't do once or twice. It is consistent. Mm. Isn't that the nature of a habit? Is well, consistency day well, in, day out? No, because a habit could be that you get easily road rage. You may not get okay. road rage every day, but it's a habit that when someone honks at you, you get road rage. And that when would I, be such a good one, eh? No, it's not a good habit. But that's a habit that's not all the time. Okay. So there are habits that can be a little more inconsistent, but there's still a way of being, still okay. habitual. Um, but the habits that we want cornerstone are habits that you do either every day Almost every day. And what I've learned mm -hmm. as well around a cornerstone habit, it's one that often impacts many other habits. Mm -hmm. So as an example of a cornerstone habit in my life, one that Ken and I instilled back in the early 90s was that we would focus on growth. Mm. Right? And so we would wake up at 5, 5.30 every morning. And from 5.30 till 6 for 
like a decade, we would listen to CHRI, mm -hmm. decade and a half probably, listen to CHRI and listen to Focus on the Family. And that was from 5.30 to 6 in the morning. And that was one little piece of growth. And then growth ended up really out of that corner, out of that habit of growth has translated into every area of our life. Mm -hmm. Into marriage, into finances, into our spiritual lives, into mm -hmm. our business lives, into absolutely everything. So growth was a cornerstone habit for us. Mm -hmm. And how have you, can you even speak for a minute, Ryan, as one of our kids, we'll let people get real and, yeah, into the sure. background. How would you say you watched that live out? Mm. And what did it do for you? So first thing that came to mind was that, you know, you woke up at 5.30, you know, doing growth and spending time as a couple, um, which was really great for them. And it was also kind of annoying because when you came to wake us up, you were so awake because you've been awake for so many hours. And we were just trying to, you know, get out of bed and, and get going. But you guys were just ready to go. And, you know, I'm making fun of that a little bit. And there, there's power in that, right? Because most people, they get to work. They're still groggy. They're still, you know, trying Some to get people. going. Not we'll everyone. most. A lot of people, but not everyone. And yet you guys had been up for hours and not just up, but engaged and learning and growing. And so you're already, you know, you're at your top game when you get to work, which is awesome. Um, and then I, it, I mean, you said growth, right? That's the habit we're talking about? I think so, because, it, and it translated into our marriage, mm -hmm. because it improved our marriage. Mm -hmm. So when we can pick a habit that can infiltrate into every aspect of our lives, that's part of being a cornerstone, mm -hmm. that it has impact or it makes another habit easily to grab as well. So I'm going to go even one step further that there was probably a habit before that, and that was going to church. Am I right? Yeah, you are. Yeah. So the habit of going to church at that time was a big step for you guys. Huge. Because you weren't believers at that time, and it, it was a big deal. And that first habit, which for some of you is like, what, going to church is a habit? Yeah, it's a habit. That's something you do every week. So that's one of those habitual, but it's not every day. And I can remember at the beginning when clients of ours, that's actually how we ended up in church and through Ken's dad, they started, the clients started taking you and Candace mm -hmm. to church. And we weren't going. And then after a little while, we kind of felt like maybe we should go where our kids are. Mm. And so we started going, and I remember it, we would go for just the service, and you would go for the Sunday school, and then other, we'd be driving home from church and talking about those people that did the Sunday school, did the church, did lunch with somebody after church, and then they might they'd go back to the evening service, and then they'd go have a snack with somebody after the evening service, or maybe dinner as well with somebody from church before the service. I remember driving home one Sunday going, Oh my goodness, like that's just, what is that? Mm -hmm. And then a few years hence that, we were driving home again one day at 10 o'clock at night after having been at somebody's house after the evening service, going, we are them. Mm -hmm. And it was one little, little habit that then expanded. expanded. So, yeah, it's neat how you can see that was your cornerstone habit, going to church, which created, it's not, you can only have so many cornerstones, but it created another foundational stone, which was growth. Right. Um, because the people at church were taking you to different uh, groups about finances and marriage, and then, you know, you started to have massive impact with the Lord working in your lives and wanted more. Right. And I love that about habits. That This is what's neat is a good habit will help you get other good habits. A bad habit will help you get other bad habits, and a great habit will also bring great habits. And so, you know, just and focus on one. That's why we're only talking about a cornerstone habit. <coughs> Excuse me. This is one that you want so ingrained in you that it's going nowhere. Like it is staying for a minimum of a year, I like to say for life, but after a year, then the cornerstone habit, you can reassess and say, do I want to keep this or not? Um, you're not married to it, and yet for that year, if you're not committed, um, 
it won't stick as a, a true habit. Right. So if you're just joining us now on the Inside Track on Real Estate, you're with Yetta Decker and Ryan Decker. And Happy New Year's if you're just joining mm -hmm. us partway through. And we're talking about habits because there's so many New Year's resolutions mm -hmm. that people make that don't tend to work. There's more gym memberships taken out at the beginning of the year than any other time of the year. And by February, most of those gym mm -hmm. memberships aren't being used. And so it clearly had not become a habit. Mm -hmm. And so listen to the rest of the show because I think you're going to learn some valuable things. And also, if you didn't hear the first half, there is some foundational stuff that you want to hear that was in the first half. Mm -hmm. And you want to hear me sharing the habit poem, of course. <laughs> so, Ryan, let's talk a little bit more about maybe some of your cornerstone habits because mm. we talked about expose Ken and I now. Yeah. So now it's your turn. So I'll talk about one of my most recent. Uh, well, should we talk? Okay. So sorry. There's there's so, <laughs> so many. So he has a habit of second guessing himself. No, he doesn't. No, I really it's don't. It's simply that this topic we talked about that we could do six shows on it. We mm. could do eight shows on it. It's something that is so intrinsic in our being now, and we've done so much um, learning and made so many mistakes mm -hmm. in this whole area that. We felt like we talked a lot about what we were going to share with you. And you also know that these shows are fresh. They're mm -hmm. not pre-rehearsed. Pre They're not scripted. We have a sense of where we're going and we have a flow of the show. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And so what you're feeling right now is Ryan just knowing there's more he wants to say. That I can't say it all. That he can't say it yeah. all. So you may want to just connect with us or come for dinner or join us at one of our client celebrations, become a client and come join us there because we'll talk about this stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So yeah, I'll talk about this habit first. And that is that um, I started reading a book a day yes. and uh, it's, it's been quite the journey. Now, some of you may be thinking, a book a day, that's impossible. Well, it was impossible until I did it. And... <laughs> Even before that, there was other people I read about who had done it. And so it's not impossible. It is doable. Um, and there are And other... he still has a life. He still has a family. Yeah. He still has work. He still has, he still eats. He still sleeps some, although a little bit less than he used mm -hmm. to due to that new yeah. habit. Hasn't watched TV really in the well, last... Well, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Oh. So don't jump into that. Oh, but it's so, so much fun for me. So the reason this is such a cornerstone for me is... I'm not just reading, you know, fictional books. You've read like one or two, haven't you? One or two. However, uh, in the last 150 books, almost all of them have been either self-help or educational books. Or faith. Or faith, which to me is still in that realm. And, you know, marriage, finance. And so I've seen a large um, growth, not just in my uh, knowledge, but also in my actions because there's all these great ideas. And so that cornerstone habit is just shifting how I do everything. It's shifting the information that goes in and it shifts the information that goes out. Right. Right. So now let's get into the... Well, can we just go back for a minute? <laughs> if you're instilling a new habit... Yes. And it's a cornerstone habit... Yes. Does that mean everyone in your world is going to embrace that new habit? Because no. that's another whole area. Do you mean, are, is everyone going to start that habit? Or is everyone going to support you in that habit? There you go. Oh, okay. So when you're doing a habit, a big habit, that's a cornerstone habit, what's interesting is a lot of people, especially those closest to you, not always. Because we were very supportive. You guys were good. There will be growing pains because you're changing a lot because it's a cornerstone habit you're changing the way you do things and in response to that people have to change how they see you and if they don't see you as a person who reads a book a day or you know gets up at the crack of dawn to learn um, they'll give you a hard time because it's not in line with what they think you are and they may even want you to do that habit but it's just so unaccustomed to them that they have a hard time supporting you. Well, and also the other thing I found of it, something that a person perceives themselves not able to do, mm. then it's also really hard for them to support you in it. Mm -hmm. So when I know when we started the 5.30 in the morning, because before that we were not really early risers at all, and to actually focus, still to this day, Ken and I will spend on average two to three hours together from five to eight or five to seven. Some mornings he leaves for hockey a little earlier, so maybe it's an hour and a half. However, from 5 till 
up till eight o'clock together, mm -hmm. growing, learning, praying, experiencing the best of us mm -hmm. together. And, and I know with your reading, a lot of people said, well, you can't do that. How are you going to do that? Your your marriage, you're going to suffer that. There's going to and it's, are you going to retain anything? Right. It, you know, there's a lot of that. Is can you even get anything when you're reading that much? Don't you have to stop and journal? And I do do that as well. Um, and I even on top of reading a book a day, I take time to pray and ask God what I'm to learn from this book and write a review. Um, so and he gives me that review every day, which mm -hmm. I so it's it's a highlight of my day. Mm -hmm. I get to read, and it's only two to eight lines, typically two to eight sentences, probably. That is the, and so reviews maybe not the right word. It's what is he taking at a yeah. cellular level, or believes he's going to take at a cellular level from that book. Yeah, because you also do a book review per se by just rereading pieces and sort of assimilating all of that. Yeah, That's so it's not really piece. a review. Yeah, right. And so sometimes we want to support the other person, and if I don't understand how you can do something, then my perspective mm -hmm. ends up impacting you negatively if you're attempting mm -hmm. to instill a, a habit. Yeah. And another habit that isn't a cornerstone habit, but it was picked up because of this cornerstone habit, is reading faster. So because I'm reading a book a day, I couldn't read as because I was a slow reader when I started. 200 words a minute. 200 words. And the average is anywhere between 200 and 300. So I was at the bottom end of 200, and that was with focus. So that wasn't like I'm just, you know, reading casually. No, this was like I'm trying to read. Not as trying. I, you are reading I as quickly reading and efficiently as, quickly as, as I can. normally do. And it was at 200. And so very quickly, I learned how to read much, much faster. And now, because I've done it for so long, it doesn't even feel fast. It's just how I read. And so that's a supporting habit because of my cornerstone habit. Which is kind of cool. It's very cool. And that's what I was starting to say a little bit about the thing with Ken and I. It was church that was the cornerstone. And you're absolutely right to have identified it that way. Mm -hmm. And all of those other things, the improvement in our relationships, both with each other and mm -hmm. with our kids, everything changed. Mm -hmm. Really, everything. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be here talking to you today. Yeah. Because I wouldn't be Mrs. Decker. So last year, yeah. New Year's, um, there's another thing that I want to talk about right now, and that is it's easier to replace a habit. Yeah, so much easier. So much easier to replace one than it is to either kill one or start a new one. Right. It's so much easier to start and kill at the same time. Like it's easier. Well, replace. Yeah, replace. Just, yeah. you know, you swap, swap it out. Swap out one that doesn't really work for you anymore yeah. to one that is going to work for you. So in last year, New Year's, I decided with prayer that it was time to get rid of TV. And I got rid of TV, and I had to replace it with something. And so what it was replaced with was prayer and sleep, as well as work. And so getting rid of TV is like daunting to people, because they're like, well, I'm going to be exhausted. What am I going to do with my time? Um, actually, most people don't think that. They don't think they have any time. And yet, when you get rid of TV, you free up, depending on the person, anywhere between one and four hours a day. Some people even say five. Like, that's a lot of time. And when you're watching that much TV, it's not rejuvenating anymore. It's exhausting. And you're tired, so you watch TV. And then you get more tired, so you want to watch more TV. So that, to me, was a really negative habit in for my you. life. Yeah. For me. And I replaced it with sleep and pray. And so I automatically was more rested. I was happier. I was deeper in my faith. And Everything and shifted. Improved, my marriage improved. Even my... your parenting, I watched it improve. That's good. So <laughs> there's so much that can shift from, and to me, that was a cornerstone habit. And there was only room to do the reading because the TV wasn't there. Right. And so we promised that we would have more to say than we would have time for, which is exactly mm -hmm. what we have found ourselves. So if you've been watching the Raw and Reels, you've had the opportunity already to get our exclusive mm -hmm. early release access of a one, one habit, what do you call it, Ryan? So I created this, and it's to help you start that one cornerstone habit. It's a worksheet that you can go through, and it's really short. It's only a page, 
and it can transform your life because it, it makes you create your new habit and stay committed to it. And so if you want a copy of this because you haven't been listening to the Ron Reel, email the Decker team at info at deckerteam.com and request the one habit worksheet form. or yeah. form, whatever you want to call it, right in the subject. And we will email you that free of charge. And if you've been listening to the Ron Reel, you would have already gotten Received it. it. And yeah. if you want to start watching yet a Ron Reel, it's just a quick one to two minute video that goes out every day. Its intention is mm. to be inspirational. Some days I think I'm really inspirational. <laughs> sometimes I have guests. Sometimes I just turn the camera on somebody else. It truly is pretty raw. The footage and real is actually spelled R-E-E-L because it's like a movie reel. And so if you want to get that, you can subscribe to Yetta, Y-U-T-T-A, Raw, R-A-W, and Real. And enjoy that. And we've had lots of people saying they're really getting lots of insights and just little encouragements there. So thanks for joining me there, actually. Mm -hmm. And we promised a book list. Okay. Let's throw a few <coughs> out there. And you can also email us and we will give you our comprehensive. So again, you would just send it to info at deckerteam.com and write habit book list. Yeah. And we will send you that. So we've got two offerings today. Okay. Woohoo! Um, so let's give a couple. Intentional Living by John Maxwell. Yeah. Which would absolutely be helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg is another one that was wonderful. Mm-hmm. And also Darren Harding's book, The Compound Effect. Those are great books. Those three would probably be my top three picks. Okay. I'm going to add two on the financial side. Okay. One is The Automatic Millionaire. Um, and when you read this book, I want you to read it from the perspective of what habit can I automatically in place in my life that I don't actually have to create the habit. I just put it in and it happens automatically. And then the second one is the four-hour work week. And the reason this book is there's so many habits you may not even thought were possible that this book kind of brings into light. And I'm going to add a sixth. Okay. Which is the wealth formula. Yes. Because it, A, it was written by our one and only Ken Decker. Mm -hmm. And it also is one of those books that allows you to look at so many different habits in your life. Because although it's a financial book, it's also a relational book. It's also a growth book. So... That one as well. And you can get that at wealth-formula.com. And there's all sorts of great forms there too. Mm -hmm. So if you're just uh, enjoying us, go back, listen. Listen to this one more than once. And a couple of great properties is Orient Park. We've got a condominium as well as a freehold townhouse. So they're both right in the same neighborhood in Blossom Park. 200000 and 296,000 properties you definitely want to call. Wow. And they're great investment properties because that's a great habit too. It's the habit of making good investment choices. So anyway, thanks for joining us on the Inside Track on Real Estate. Till next time. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's.